Oregon is uh, just a great state to live in because it, we have these wonderful uh, salmonid populations. Beautiful fish, of course, and uh, a lot of concern about how forestry might impact those, those fishery populations. So I think it's interesting that ecology and economics have the same root word, which is ecos, meaning house. So ecology is the study of the house, this, and economics are kind of the rules of the house or the currency. And so we're trying to figure out in forestry, can we have one house or is it a house divided? And I think we can have a whole house. After years of difficulties, including overfishing and loss of quality habitat, several populations of Pacific ocean-going fish were listed under the Endangered Species Act, including the Oregon Coastal Coho Salmon in 1998. Oregon's efforts to preserve and improve habitat in forest streams are paying off, not only for coho, but also for other species such as steelhead and cutthroat trout. There are three key pieces to Oregon's approach, land use planning, effective regulation of forest practices, and voluntary habitat restoration. There's this, this triad of, of land use activities, of voluntary efforts, and of the regulatory forest practice rules, which have made Oregon one of the premier areas for protecting water quality and fish habitat. The first step in keeping fish populations vibrant is to ensure that forest land remains forest land. That's a legacy of Oregon's land use legislation that keeps farmland as farmland and forest land as forest land. The watersheds in Oregon's forests are better places for fish, especially troubled species such as coho salmon, than waterways and farmland, cities, or rural housing developments. Another critical component of managing healthy watersheds is the regulation of our forest practices. In 1957, the Oregon Legislature appropriated $50,000 for a long-term scientific study into how logging practices of the day were affecting streams and fish. So began the ALSI Paired Watershed Study in Oregon's Coast Range. It lasted 14 years and helped lay the foundation for today's forest practices in Oregon. What we saw is how you managed a watershed made a huge difference in the water quality and fisheries response that we saw. So in Needle Branch, which was the completely clear-cut watershed, you had tremendous increases in stream temperature and effects on the cutthroat trout population in, in that stream. While on the patch-cut watershed that buffers were left along the fish-bearing reaches, we didn't see those large changes in temperature or the, the shifts in the fish populations. So th what this meant to us was that there was a way to manage these watersheds to dramatically reduce the, the water quality and fisheries impacts that we saw. The study led to the passage of the Oregon Forest Practices Act in 1971. The act and associated rules govern private forest management in Oregon, including road building. Over time, the act has been revised significantly nearly 30 times as science has improved understanding of ecosystems. And even as the act evolved, three long-term watershed studies were launched to measure its effectiveness. So the Oregon Forest Practices Act was one of the first in the nation, and it's not been a static act. It's changed as we learn more. And we, we constantly work with Oregon Department of Forestry to understand the effects of the practices on water quality and fish habitat. So one of the, the fascinating elements of the Oregon Forest Practices Act is, has been to watch its evolution uh, and as it adapts to a new science findings. Uh, we, we have uh, more research uh, related, beginning with the LC watershed study, but through us a whole series of additional watershed studies that have allowed us to look at changing our practices in riparian management areas, on forest roads, and on site preparation. Apart from its laws, Oregon encourages voluntary local efforts to improve fish habitat. The state has dozens of locally organized watershed councils. These groups include people from all walks of life. Together, they identify and implement projects to improve their watershed. The state awards grants to fund watershed enhancements, and landowners chip in too, providing access, expertise, labor, equipment, and materials. It's a process that's unique in the United States, and it's called the Oregon Plan for Salmon and Watersheds. 
one thing for certain is that we can't do this without collaboration. And our partners vary from private landowners, individual private landowners, again, to private timber companies, state agencies, federal agencies, local municipalities. The city of Lincoln City, for example, is very interested in protecting its drinking water supply. All of these partners come into play when we're doing restoration projects. Well, the benefits of restoration are really to um, improve the water quality of the watershed. And fish are important for uh, this, this project as uh, um, the existing condition of this, of this culvert was that fish could not pass from downstream and use the habitat upstream uh, from this culvert. And so by replacing this pipe and putting a fish passable pipe in, we're able to get uh, uh, not only adults but juvenile fish upstream to be able to utilize the habitat. This is an excellent example of an effective restoration project. We brought large wood in here that is no longer present on the stream bank, so it wouldn't fall naturally, so we had to bring it in. It's created deep, cool pools and small, small fish refuge. And if you look closely, you can actually see those fish at, using the site already, even though it's only been a month. One of the exciting things about forests is they are resilient. And so if we can reduce the impacts to a very to very small impacts, then they recover rapidly over time and downstream. And so we can protect this. We are still able to detect changes in water quality and habitat as a result of, of forest management activities. But those changes have become so small that they are certainly within the range of natural variability that we see in, in watersheds. The benefits that we see of the forest practices is that we see improved water quality. We've seen some fish species starting to rebound because we're paying more attention to habitat and water quality than we did in the past. And we're seeing the effects of that. Balancing between the ecological and the economic, you know, there is a point there. We need to get resources, trees from the, from the forest because we use the wood to build our houses, to use paper but we also want to balance it with the ecological function. 40 plus years after the original Forest Practices Act, there's still work to do. But despite fluctuating ocean conditions, the numbers of coastal coho that return to spawn in these forest streams is trending up. The Oregon Way has been one of balancing the economic value of forest management and the ecological importance of healthy fisheries and clean water. Step by step, we are becoming a house united.